You know the worst feeling in keystones? It takes place during incorporeal week, when you're in the middle of a busy but normal trash pull and a set of incorporeal beings spawn. You use your single CC on the first ad and then lock eyes with the second. You can only watch helplessly as a warlock, demon hunter, druid, and hunter all make no attempt to stop what's coming. The being completes its cast and your group promptly wipes. It is the third time this has happened so far. That is the worst feeling in Keystones. This is one very specific example, but the feeling is all too common. That sense of helplessness, where you see a job that needs doing, but for whatever reason, it's out of your hands. You're reduced to a spectator. This makes us mad as hell, and we aren't going to take it anymore. So today on Skillcap, we're going to pick the specs that we feel are the best equipped to avoid these scenarios, the specs most capable of carrying a key. But before you can carry LFG, you need to get your own house in order, and there's no faster way to level up your game than with a subscription to skillcap.com. But let's start by defining our terms. What does it mean to carry a key? Back in the day, you carried a dungeon by doing the most damage. Today, times have changed, and there's no better illustration of that than the rise of augmentation. Augmentation is widely seen as the most influential DPS spec, despite it being a net DPS loss over other options. AUG is so popular because Modern Mythic Plus is not built around damage checks. Instead, the standard routes have difficult pulls that stress your group's control and defensive play, but if you can execute them, the timer is a non-issue. Augmentation may cost you damage, but it contributes so much towards surviving the key that you come out on top. This principle applies broadly to Mythic Plus. You complete keys by surviving them. When was the last time you ran a key where everything went right? You had no deaths, a decent route, all that, but the DPS was so atrocious that you depleted anyway. To solo carry a key today means to make sure that every boring task gets done, stopping every cast, dispelling every debuff, prioritizing every critical target. So let's outline what specific traits we're looking for in a spec capable of carrying a key. Firstly, the obvious one, we want mob control, AOE stops, an interrupt, a purge, maybe a single target stun, that sort of thing. We're especially interested in abilities that answer incorporeal and afflicted. Group-wide defensive cooldowns are good. Routing tools like Mind Soothe and Shroud can help open up routing options and help impose our will on the tank. Everyone has access to a battle res through the engineering bracers, but we all know how much nicer it feels to use the real thing. And while we aren't concerning ourselves with overall damage output, we do want to pay attention to the damage profile of the spec. Most dungeons have at least one notable spawn that needs to be nuked, so it helps to have specs that can quickly swap targets. The best example would be the totems on the final boss in Brackenhide Hollow. Funnel mechanics are another desirable trait for a DPS to have. Funnel just refers to using multiple mobs to increase your single target damage on a priority target. Another example would be Shadow Priests spreading their dots, which feeds them resources to allow for more devouring plague casts. Under the right circumstances, Funnel can allow specs to output far more single target damage than they would under patchwork conditions. And finally, we want to be tanky. None of this matters if we're dead. No single spec ticks all these boxes, but here are our picks for the best candidates. We want to start with Enhance, because we were admittedly fairly harsh on Enhance in our previous tier list. We have given Enhance the cruelest of labels off meta. But today, we aren't judging Enhance by the standards of the meta, we're judging it by its ability to carry keystones. And in that department, Shaman ticks a lot of boxes. They have multiple AoE stops, and their interrupt has the shortest cooldown of any kick. They can play Purge. Hex is an answer to Incorporeal. Ancestral Guidance, as a healing CD, is solid. Earth Elemental can hedge the bed against bad tanks. Reincarnate can hedge the bed against bad healers. And in terms of Afflicted, Shaman have the rare ability to dispel both Afflicted Souls with Poison Cleansing Totem, which feels unnecessary until you notice how often Afflicted Spawns can clash with other magic effects that your healer needs to deal with. But again, this stuff applies to all Shaman specs. Why are we spotlighting Enhance? Well, let's use an example. Here's a clip from Lotus, the top-ranked balance druid at time of writing. This pull in Brackenhide Hollow includes a Rot Singer, who spawns a totem that periodically applies an extremely dangerous disease. So even though this pack is an AoE feast, success comes down to killing the totem and Rotsinger quickly. In other words, single target damage. However, Moonkins aren't built to knock over totems. They specialize in multi-dotting and spamming Starfall. But Enhance shines in situations like this. Enhance has strong sustained single target damage, meaningful funnel with low ramp up time. The Shaman and Mage carry the single target portion of the pull, allowing the Moonkin to spam out Starfalls without a care in the world. So while the Moonkin is doubling the Enhanced Shaman's damage while the Rotsinger dies, this pull was made possible by the Enhancement Shaman. 
Most DPS you meet in Mythic Plus will default to playing like Lotus, maximizing their overall damage at the expense of priority damage. Enhance is an off-meta spec, but it is a solution to off-meta problems. Enhanced Shaman's consistent single target profile can effectively balance out that pure AoE and ensure that the critical targets are dying. It's a thankless job, but it does genuinely make keys easier. And while we're here, we may as well name drop Outlaw Rogue. In the past, we've called Enhance a worse version of Outlaw. In a direct comparison, Outlaw brings less control compared to Enhance. Outlaw brings a bit less single target damage compared to a funneling Enhance, but Outlaw's higher target cap ensures its overall damage skews higher. Shiv is nice to have, and while Shroud of Concealment isn't as impactful as previous seasons, it does have its uses. But on the whole, Outlaw has less job-doing tools than Enhance. It doesn't have great answers for Incorporeal, and can't interact with Afflicted, and so on. But we regard Outlaw as an A-tier spec. So if you're watching this and think, I like the sound of Enhance, but I want less solo carrying and more just playing the meta, then Outlaw is for you. Now, let's move on to our next pick, Retribution Paladin, who are so good at carrying keys that it feels like we're cheating. Paladin's whole theme is support, so we have lots of tools to potentially prop up a weak healer or protect a vulnerable DPS. Cleanse is a potential lifesaver in Brackenhide Hollow, where groups often don't take full advantage of the files around the place. Paladins bring a battle res and are fairly durable, complete with a full-on immunity. Using Blessing of Freedom on your Warlock during Entangling may not help you time the key, but it is a good way to make friends. And we as a community have forgotten just how good Hammer of Justice is. Retribution's damage profile allows it to easily swap to new targets, and Avenging Wrath's 60 second cooldown regularly lines up with add spawns. Bromox spawns his second totem right on the 60 second mark, which makes it ideal for the ret to immediately blow it up. And on Wrath Eye, wings last long enough to cover two totems. And while it's far from ideal, Paladins are one of the few classes who are capable of covering two incorporeal beings through the use of Repentance and Turn Evil. Should a Ret Paladin need to do this? Absolutely not, but desperate times and all that. But now let's jump over to the range side of things, where we were spoilt for choice. Let's start with Augmentation of Ochres, who we talked about. As the first full-blown support spec, their dominance in Keystones has been unprecedented. Augmentation is a showcase in all the ways that you can and cannot carry your teammates. In a sense, their appeal is that they help carry your healer. No other DPS offers your healer Ebon Might. The AUG also brings a large suite of defensive tools that further supports the healer. And it's fair to say that Augment's control is the strongest of any spec after Vengeance. These are the qualities that allow it to do a bit less damage but still dominate the meta. But there's that word again, the meta. We don't care about the meta, we want to carry our teammates, and that's where Augmentation starts to get complicated. While Augmentation brings all those tools, it seeds the job of dealing damage entirely to the two other DPS. Your damage contribution depends on them. So if your teammates suck, you suck. You can't kill the totems for them, and if one of the two DPS die, they take a huge chunk of damage with them. You really feel it. This all means that augmentation isn't suitable for carrying low keys where you expect your teammates to underperform. In low keys, the challenge comes from your teammates standing in the fire. You can't rescue a teammate from that. Well, you can, but only once every minute. Augmentation starts to shine once you get a bit higher, and your teammates know the fundamentals. So let's jump over to Shadow Priest. We've been talking about Shadow constantly in recent videos, so we'll keep it brief. Shadow is on this list because it remains absurdly overpowered. Their pure AoE is insane and produces a hefty amount of funnel for priority targets. Their pure single target is competitive with any spec you care to name. Their defensives are top tier and their utility is second to none. When it comes to incorporeal, Dominate Mind is the gold standard. Priests don't just stop the destabilized cast, but turn it against the mobs. Priests have a purge baseline. Vampiric Embrace is a potent DPS healing cooldown. Mind Soothe can enable skips and keep roots clean. Psychic Scream owns. Mass Dispel, Power Infusion, Life Grip, I could go all day. Shadow Priests have more utility than they know what to do with, and that allows them to contribute to basically every aspect of the Keystone. They're so OP. The same thing can be said about Frost Mages. Mages can carry keys right now because they're just that strong. Mages bring tons of control and have arguably the best personal defensive kit in the game, and Mass Barrier is OP as hell. Spell Steel is an easy one-point investment for them. Mages can cover Afflicted with Decurse, and of course, Polymorph is the original crowd control and a simple answer for Incorporeal. But it speaks to how good Frost is right now that what we really like about them is their damage profile. With Glacial Spike, Frost Mages have incredible funnel potential and unrivaled burst damage. When it comes to nuking down Rot Burst Totems in Brackenhide, Frost Mages can legitimately carry the group. It can trivialize the scariest part of perhaps the scariest boss fight. So that brings us to a new segment that we've stolen from our League of Legends channel, the Tip of the Week. 
Every Jedi knows the importance of the high ground, and in Season 4, the high ground is downright overpowered. Don't believe me? Here's three examples. The first is in Algathar Academy with this Ravager, whose vicious ambush can't reach players standing on this ledge. All it takes is one player standing here to break this pool's most dangerous mechanic, just don't get breathed on. Our second example comes from Brackenhide Hollow on that same pool we saw earlier. By making use of Rescue and Life Grip, all three DPS are able to stand on this rock. They can't be hit by the Necrotic Breath and any loose Lashers can't reach them. But if the rock isn't showy enough for you, stand on this spike to get the same effect. The same method can be used on the first pull in No Could Offensive. Standing on this spear renders you ineligible for almost every mechanic. This is a 14 mob pull in a plus 19 key and nothing is happening. This is just one example of the ways that players from guilds like Echo trivialize keys. And there's no easier way to learn to play like the pros than through skillcap.com. If you want to learn more tech like this, check out the link in the description. Now let's move away from DPS and talk about tanks. Tanks obviously have enormous influence on the outcome of any dungeon, and Vengeance Demon Hunter is perhaps as dominant as any tank has ever been. Vengeance's whole purpose is to enable massive pulls like the ones you're seeing. Thanks to Vengeance, MDI-style pulls have been brought to the masses. Even accounting for the nerfs to their sigils, Vengeance carries the control on any trashed pull like this. We could also talk about how Imprison is the single best control to Incorporeal, but who cares? If you want to solo carry keys in Mythic Plus this season, Vengeance isn't just the obvious tank to pick, it's the obvious spec to pick outright. So let's move on to the other tank we want to highlight, Protection Paladin. In terms of controlling large packs, Prot Paladin can't compete with Vengeance, but AoE Lockdown is Vengeance's whole thing. Protection Paladins may not enable the big flashy stuff, but for normal trash pulls and boss fights, you can't overlook the impact of Avenger's shield. And for that very specific job, Protection Paladin is perfect. Prot Paladins can genuinely carry the interrupts on encounters like Hacklaw's Warband. Between all of the Paladin utility we've talked about and Word of Glory, a Protection Paladin can do quite a bit to support a struggling healer. Their off healing has its limits and it gets harder the higher the key level, but you'd be surprised how much a good Prot Paladin can contribute to the group's survival. This all makes Prot Paladins arguably the most effective tank at carrying low keys. Let's take a second to talk about the idea of a healer carrying a key. It's very easy for healers to feel like passengers in a keystone. You can't meet the DPS check for your teammates, and you can't stop them from standing in the swirlies. It can feel like you're a babysitter. Your job is to chase the children around, catching the vases they knock over, and cleaning up after them. All healers can contribute to the group's damage and control, but these are the specs that we feel have a slight edge when your group is underperforming. First up, Mistweaver Monk. Our consultants view Mistweaver as the healer that has the most potential to carry a key. Mistweaver brings together all the elements you'd want. It has a very chill healing style with a toolkit full of short healing CDs. That provides it a flexibility that a spec like Discipline may lack. Life Cocoon is the only external defensive that you can really get away with using reactively. Iron Bark won't do much to save someone already at 5% health, but Life Cocoon will. It's the button you want for dealing with surprises. Mistweaver's control is also above average. Leg Sweep and Ring of Peace both own, Paralysis can be used as a single target stop, and of course, it's also a great answer to Incorporeal. And a melee kick just makes it all the sweeter. In a caster comp where kicks may be weaker, and as an offensive healer, the monk can still put out meaningful damage while they're also needing to pump out tons of healing. While you aren't going to solo any crystals for your group, your damage adds up. As we've said before, Mistweaver feels purpose-built to do well in keys. It's hard to go wrong with Mistweaver right now. Finally, to wrap up, we have Resto Shaman as our other pick. We've already highlighted just how much control Shamans bring as a whole, and while you can argue that Resto is a little bit more talent locked than Enhanced, all the utility is still accessible if required. Resto Shaman has a lot of similarities to Mistweaver, but Resto is a bit more of a vibe spec. Mistweaver monks have the unenviable task of playing in melee this season, whereas our shaman can hang back and chill, tossing out heals and meatballs as required. Our shaman's biggest strength over Mistweaver is wind shear's range and short cooldown. It's ideal for helping the tank to gather up loose enemy casters. Resto shaman can't brute force through problems with raw HPS like some other healers may be able to, but with all of its utility, it's a healer whose goal is to prevent things from getting out of hand in the first place. But that's all we have for you. If you enjoyed what you saw here and want to see more from us, hit that subscribe button. And if you check out skillcap.com using the link in the description, you'll get an exclusive discount. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.